Hello, this is Reza from Radicad, and in this video, I'm going to talk about a recursive function in Power Query, or let's say Power BI, how you can uh, write a function that call the function itself, and I'll show you that through an example of Fibonacci uh, series. Let's check it out. Um, to understand recursive, first uh, let me explain what is Fibonacci uh, sequence and then we'll talk about uh, recursive for that. Uh, this column that you see here is uh, what we call as a Fibonacci uh, sequence. Um, the first value is 0, the second is 1, the third 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. You see these are not following a normal order of numbers after uh, one is another one or uh, after five is eight, right? Uh, the way that this is calculated is by, uh, for every number here, let's consider this as a number, for every number, this value is uh, sum of the two values before that. In this case, 34 is 13 plus 21. Or for, for example, for 13, this value is five plus eight. So every value, uh, is uh, add of the two values before that. Uh, so if we call this 13 Fibonacci or f of 7, the result of f7 would be f5 plus f6. And the result if, of each of those, for example, 5 is f3 uh, plus f four right so it's it's like that and it goes recursive all the way back to these two numbers and for these two numbers we have like uh, static values uh, f0 is always zero f1 is one right this uh, process of calling the function itself to calculate the result of this based on the result of two three previous calculation is a recursive process in Power BI, specifically in Power Query, which is what we are going to talk about here, you can do that with a custom function. Um, I have previously explained what is a custom function and how you can create that. Uh, here is an example of a Fibonacci uh, custom function. The way that I created it is uh, through get data blank query. And then I uh, I wrote this expression, this code in that blank query. You can download the code from the description down below, uh, which goes to my blog post. It has all the codes and the Power BI file. You can download them all from there. So the way that this function works, this is the input of the function uh, x, and it is a number value. It returns a number value as well. Now, if that uh, value is zero or one, then it is just returning the same value. If it is zero, it returns zero. If it is one, it returns one. If it is not zero or one, means if it is two or three or four, then it would be uh, the result of that function called for uh, x minus one and called for x minus two. Right? The way that I said uh, that call this function again was just by uh, mentioning the name of the function. You see Fibonacci is actually the name of my query here. And I use that uh, and Power Query is case sensitive. Be careful of that as well. It is capital F here, right? So I just call that function with the name of the function, right? I can invoke this function by simply calling it from here for value. I can say, give me the Fibonacci number nine and that would give me 34, right? Or I can have a list of uh, numbers here. Here is a list of numbers I have in another query uh, from zero to 19, and I created this list of numbers using list.numbers function. Again, you can get these codes from my blog articles. Now, uh, if I go to add column, invoke custom function, then I would be able to do something like this. I'd say uh, invoke that uh, function query, which is my uh, function name, and this is the input column. And the result is like this, which, uh, which returns the Fibonacci value for every uh, 
for every value. For 9, for example, it is 34. For 10, it is 55, right? So it works very simple. Um, the way that we define this whole function is another story and you have to watch uh, another video I did about how the block of the function works, what is let, what is in, all those kind of things. Uh, but the way that we make that function recursive is just basically by calling the function name. This method, however, only works if we have defined that function as a query here. Uh, this is not in line inside another query. This is uh, a query itself. So I can call it just like that, right? And pass parameters to this. A very critical thing about uh, Mm, recursive functions is that if I call a recursive function without exit criteria, this would be like an endless loop. Now imagine if I did not had this part in my code, right? If I said uh, this is always Fibonacci x minus 1 plus Fibonacci x minus 2 and return just that value, then there was no exit. For 5 I calculated f uh, f4 plus f3, for f3, f2 plus f1, for f1, f0 plus f minus 1, and it goes on and on, right? Because there is no exit criteria. It is very important that your uh, recursive function has an exit criteria. Here, for example, my exit criteria is that uh, it goes through the loop, but as soon as it hits 0 or 1, then it returns just that value. It doesn't call the function again, right? You should always have an exit criteria in your recursive function. Otherwise, this would be an endless loop. It will cause to um, break your Power BI solution. You have to close your file, open it again. It never works like that. Having exit criteria is one important thing. Another thing is, what if my function is not a, uh, is not a separate function itself? It's not a like query like this. It is defined in line another expression. Let me show you that in this example. So here I have the function again. If I go to advanced editor, here it is. Okay, here I have uh, the function, but this time the function is defined inside the expression. You see, this is the function defined, and my function name is f, just, just f, right? I define the function here, and I'm calling that function inside the expression. So this function doesn't really exist outside of this query. Everything is living inside this query. If I want to call the function, I just basically say f1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, right? Now, if I uh, call it outside of the function with the function name, that's absolutely fine because that function acts like a variable. But what if I want to call the function from the inside of the function and this is an inline function? In that case, if I don't have these uh, characters, let me first remove those characters and then explain uh, what happens without those. Uh, so if I don't have those characters, if I remove these two, then I would get error uh, for anything uh, except 0, 1, because 0, 1 doesn't really call the function, it just returned the value, but everything after that, it returning me an error that's saying that this import match no export, did you miss a module reference? And the reason for that is that I'm calling the function inside the environment that that function is created already, right? So it is not fully initialized yet that I'm going to call it. In those cases, we use a character here as a prefix for that function just inside the function itself. And that character is uh, at sign. I can use an at sign here for this and here for this, but I want to use it outside I won't use it here because this is outside, this is after the initialization of that uh, of that variable has been done. So outside would be just normal, but inside I would use uh, the at sign. This at sign is also called inclusive identifier reference. And that's the terminology for that, but let's put that terminology aside. If I use that, then it means that this will be able to call that back and I will get the result. Uh, very simply. So only uh, required if I'm calling a function that is defined in line inside an expression, not uh, not outside 
as a separate function itself. You can still use at sign even for those functions that are defined outside, like at sign here, at sign there, but it's not needed. Okay, so here you go. This is uh, how um, Power Query recursive function works in Power BI. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos of Power BI and AI.